What's going on guys, LCG here, and I'm here to bring you a first look at the game Firewatch. Alright, we're going to go ahead and hit start new game. We're going to... Ooh, excuse me, I'm burping already from this coffee. We're going to go ahead and save over that one. I just tried to get a look and see what the game was all about and how to move around. Uh, so, looking at the description, it says, Firewatch is a single player, first person mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness where your only emotional lifeline is the person on the other end of a handheld radio. Right now we're in Boulder, Colorado in 1975 and I see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing, well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder around her. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. We approach her. I, I'm hammered. And I say, you, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. I'm a future hangover. Oh, what? You reply, awfully confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. And she flags down a waiter. One week later, Julie and I were together. Now that is true love. I right, got a backpack here. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Throw it over your shoulder. Right, so the graphics in this game are not the finest. Uh, you'll see there's uh, limited interaction with stuff in the environment. No big deal. That's kind of nice because this does seem like it's a storyteller game where they're trying to guide you through a story rather than um, you know, a bunch of mechanics that they've designed. You date for over a year and she drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in, share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. Actually, you're drinking beer just about anywhere and life is good. And Julia wants to get a dog. There's Scruffy, an undersized beagle that Julia is in love with. She wants to bring it with her to class. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while we'll walking this dog. It's badass. But we all know how this goes. Bucket the Beagle, you're coming with us. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him, and I love him too. 1979, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? Not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. Yeah, I think that'd be neat. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I'd like that. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents get hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Real romantic novel thus far. All right. Uh, looking around, this game is a little cartoony, which not to say that that's bad or anything. It's just an observation. They do the low poly count style graphics. We're being told no fireworks, thoroughfare trails not recommended, so this is a difficult trail. Um, do not forget to check in. Did we check in? I don't even know. How will I know? And uh, let's see, does it show where we are? I don't believe so, but... Oh, go ahead and put that hat on. Bam! Now we're looking sharp. I don't know if I can see myself, but we're looking good. We got this little gate here. It's wide open for us. All right, all right. Not bad. And if you guys know anything about me, I'm a very thorough person, unnecessarily. It's Thursday night and Julia's four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Ah. Uh, 
I find it's best to not get mad immediately. Ah, oh, but now wait. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment as I make some coffee and go to work. That sounds terrible. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. I'm gonna frolic like a Victoria's Secret model because I'm silly and I am pretty. Nice little drop there. I'm not loving this camera effect, but I think that's supposed to simulate a, uh, a twilight type uh, mood, I guess you would say. Sun's going down. And let's see. Two forks. Fire lookout. Eight more miles. Oh, man! Space bar. Yep. And we're over. 1982, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town that brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug me with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Ba 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 fuck da 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 dog, Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. The attacker. Ooh. I'd like to beat his goddamn face in, but instead, we're gonna scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work in 1984. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair, she wants to move. You absolutely do not. Oh. Ah, uh, I'm actually, this is, this is so strange because right now I'm actually a little, I'm very involved in this. Um, it's really selfish to convince her to not take the job, but commuting back and forth is going to be difficult. But realistically, you can't, you don't want to give her a reason to resent you. Um, you ask her if she'll commute back and forth. I don't want her to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees, agrees and flies to Boulder three times each semester. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a, col a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it, or you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. No, you don't drink to solve your problems. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's only 41, and you decided to keep it a secret for now. This game is actually really tugging at my heartstrings right now, and uh, I'm not loving that. I don't, I wasn't expecting this at all. Holy smokes. All right, let's pick up the journal. I kind of expected some silliness going on here. <sighs> Bucket's getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. And a week later, she goes back to university. Julia's affliction gets worse by 1987. She can't remember things in class and her research is in shambles. 
She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated and then gets sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes through a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family and they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day, but she only gets worse. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. Let's look into a full-time care facility. Oh man, I, this game really is an emotional sap right from the beginning. Holy hell. If you are watching this, um, I don't know if it's evident in my voice, but I've, I've already had to choke back tears a couple times. And um, my fiance would not describe me as an emotional person. That's, um... No. Firewatch, you are doing something incredible with this game. Her family agrees with my decision, and we find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. Get to see her every day. And every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I'll cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close with her in 1989. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist, but I won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by and Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more. You think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. And I take it. Oh, these breaks are perfectly timed. Um, they they hit right before, uh, you know, you're you're overwhelmed. I think but they do a fantastic job there. But before we go into this tower, um, I'm actually going to cut this episode here. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I should be apologizing to you or thanking the developers with this game. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to come back in a little bit, guys. Everybody, this is LCG. I want to thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, I, everybody stay happy, stay healthy. Avoid the dementia and... Eat your Cheerios, everybody. This is LCG, and I'm heading out. We'll see you soon.